It's been a couple of weeks since I've given you all an update on the pond. We have a lot of things to discuss. Spring is finally here, so we're going to start the lime and fertilizer program in the pond to get those water parameters just right. We already have the bluegills and fathead minnows eaten twice a day. We feed them at 9 in the morning and 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And basically, they don't eat it right here. They haven't figured out where it's coming from yet. But you can see we got a slight breeze, so whatever bank it ends up blowing it to, they pile in there and eat. Here's a quick look at some of that footage. And what I've noticed is most of the fathead minnows stay up near the surface and every now and again you'll see a group of bluegills come through but they're kind of sitting down on the bottom. And we got a project I'll be working on on Alcatraz Island. We're going to be planting some fruit and citrus trees, building Liz a vegetable garden. But before we get into all of that, let's check out the new animals that showed up at the pond this week. So now that the pond is full, we have new wild animals coming by every week to check it out. And if you missed last week's video, we had the first bald eagle come through and I asked you all to help us name it. And Nam Dog said, I think Uncle Sam will be a great name for the eagle. And I 100% agree. So Nam Dog, send me your address. I'll get your package sent out. But this week we had a different type of bird show up and it was two wild geese. And so far, it looks like they're here to stay. They come through every day and have been using Alcatraz Island a lot. And that's perfect because we built that island so the ducks and other birds could escape the coyotes and predators around here. So I like the fact that they're using it. And I also think that geese will help defend ducks. So this is a good sign. If they hang around, we may let our ducks out and hopefully they'll protect them. But I've let you guys name every animal that came out to the farms. So now I need two names for these two new geese that showed up. But here was a cool shot. I'm not sure if this geese was mad at the decoys when they first came in or not. But one of them looked pretty heated coming in at one of those duck decoys. And I finally got a close-up shot of one of the hawks trying to dry out right after a rainstorm. We have a pair of them that hang out around here always looking for those mice. Got the geese hanging out over there in Bonnie's Bayou. And I'm heading out to Alcatraz because... As you can see there, the grass doesn't grow too well because we built that island with a lot of sandy clay. So I got a bunch of bags of lawn soil and it should make it a lot easier for the grass to grow. I got some Bermuda grass seed right here. So we're gonna put some of these bags out and see if we can have a nice grassy island this spring. You can see how fine that Bermuda seed is. And the reason I chose Bermuda is because it spreads out rather than up. It sends those runners out as opposed to bahia grass that grows vertical. And I'm not really wanting to be out here every week with a weed eater. All right, I got the seed spread out. And you can see that little handbag spreader spread it pretty good throughout. Now I'm gonna take a rake and just rake the top of this really lightly just to cover it up just a little bit. I gotta get some water over here to the island. So I got a water hose coiled up right there. We're about to pull it across the pond and set up a little sprinkler system out here. And you can see the hose is starting to sink now that water's running through it. And now we can water the island grass. Just got the grill fired up. We got some friends and family over and I can tell you now that the pond is complete it's hands down my favorite spot to hang out with people on the weekends just can't wait until we can cast a line and catch some fish okay. all right folks we're gonna be doing some grilling out here at the farm got Sarah our big help out here with us mommy chef Pat chef and as you've seen in our previous videos we use the Kamakoto knife sets because they're extremely sharp these knives are made using high quality Japanese steel and each knife goes through a 19 step process that takes several years to complete. Every knife is individually inspected and will come with a lifetime guarantee. And today we're going to start out with one of Liz's dips that we call spicy ceviche. And here's a quick look at all of the ingredients. And as you'll see over the upcoming weeks, we're going to plant some citrus trees and also build a vegetable garden. And our goal is to be able to grow all of our own fruit and vegetables out here at the farm. But this is a simple dip. You just start out by cutting up the tomatoes, the onion, the jalapeno, one lemon, one lime, 
one orange. You mix everything in a bowl, squeeze the juices in on top of it, stir everything up, and that's a simple healthy snack. And today we've been using the Kamikoto Kampeki knife set and it's perfect for cookouts like these because it includes a 7 inch vegetable knife, an 8.5 inch slicing knife, and a 5 inch utility knife. And we've been using this knife set for months now and I would highly recommend it. And don't just take it from me, they're used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. And they also make a perfect gift because they're shipped out in these ash wood boxes. So go check them out, I'll put a link down in the description below that will give you $50 off your purchase. And if you've seen in some of the previous videos, we're getting a cabin built and brought out here. So we're going to be pouring the slab for that next week. Should have a perfect view of the pond. And next up, it is time to build Liz's vegetable garden. <laughs> and I've never seen anybody that gets more detailed when it comes to a garden. If I would have given her enough time, she probably would have done this in AutoCAD. But she's got everything laid out like she wants it. But I'm excited to try out a new tiller I got. And so far it's definitely getting the job done. It beats having to spray the grass and wait on it to die off. It does a pretty good job of getting down there a couple inches and flipping that soil over. Even got my little farm girl riding with me today. And so next I hooked up the digger attachment because we're going to do some corn rows and potatoes. So I got that all lined out. But check out this little guy. So if you ever wonder why we have so many owls and hawks hanging around the pond, it's because they're field mice everywhere. And these little guys also like to chew on my tractor wires. But all I can tell him is he better find a better hiding spot before tonight because I can guarantee you that the owls will be out. So after I got done tilling everything up, I noticed how many peanuts were left over and I was really surprised that there are actually still a lot of good peanuts. But I know for a fact something's going to come through tonight and eat them, so we're going to put up a game camera and see who stops by Liz's garden. And it does not surprise me one bit that the owl we call Al Capone is out here trying to find that mouse. And it looks like he's even using the game camera as his perch. And some deer coming through to collect the peanuts. And some birds getting whatever's left over that next morning. So if you watched our previous videos, we put out a peanut picnic table to try to lure the fox squirrel that we call Foxy in. And it's been a really tough time. Most of the other animals eat all the peanuts before he comes around. But today I got my long range lens out and got him out in the field eating some of those peanuts and got some close up footage of him. And I guess I can see why he's not so interested in the peanut table because he has a field full of them out here. Looks like he's got a mouth full of them and he's heading back to his nest. So speaking of new animals showing up at the farm, we got two big hogs. And for those of you that have been around since before the pond series, you may recognize these two guys, but they've gotten a lot bigger. So when they first showed up at the farm, they were little piglets, and we called them Hakuna and Matata. And we never saw the mommy or daddy pigs, but they would run around out here chasing each other and basically just playing out here on the farm. And then they disappeared for about a year. But the one thing I can tell you is that wherever they went, had a good supply of food because they have put on the pounds. But I'm kind of hoping these two go back to where they came from so they don't root up all the gardens we just got done planting. So the owl house that we put out a few weeks ago has worked out great. The owls are still coming through and using it every night. And I wanted to get a little bit closer look in case they decided to build a nest in there. So I mounted a camera on the side of the owl house. And let's see if we can get a close up of them coming out tonight. And I believe that this is the smaller owl that we call Hooter showing up, but that's a cool shot with all the stars in the background. But it would be really cool if they would nest in here and we'd get a really good close-up look at them. And we got some more birds that use this as a perch throughout the day.
And so the next night turned out pretty interesting. They were using the house a lot. Mostly just using it as a perch to hunt for the mice. And everything was going good until one of the owls used the camera as a perch. <laughs> and it kind of messed up the angle, so so that's a wrap on the owl footage for this week. So we had some people asking about the pond leak. So a couple months ago we had a leak out of the back side of the dam and we applied this polymer. And at the same time I set up this science experiment where I put a little thin layer of polymer right there. Sand on the bottom, sand on the top, and we dyed some water blue, poured it in the top, and as soon as it hit that polymer layer, you can see where it started expanding and sealing the jar off, and two months later, that water has still not reached this bright bottom layer of sand. And that's exactly what happened out there in the pond, and I'm happy to say it completely fixed our leak. So in the last video, I showed you guys what type of fish feed we use. It's the Purina Aquamax 500, and those are the floating pellets, but I decided to go out and get this starter which is a smaller pellet and i believe it sinks so we're going to test it i got some bait fish hanging out in the corner right here oh yeah these pellets are tiny compared to those others so i think i'm gonna do a combination but let's go see if they like it first so these pellets are interesting they do start off floating for a little while but then once they get saturated they sink down to the bottom so i do like the fact that they float some because it lets me see the fish eating them and i know they like it so I think I'll put this type in one of the feeders and then the bigger floating pellets in the other feeder. But it's only going to be a couple of months before the bass are in here chasing these little guys around. So I went ahead and tilled up some more areas over here by the pond where we feed the wildlife. Probably going to plant some corn as soon as this last frost is over. But we were able to go ahead and plant the potatoes. We had a few different types of them. And those red potatoes are going to be perfect for a crawfish bowl later in the year. Alright, we've got a big variety of fruit and citrus trees. We were going to plant them this week, but we have one last cold front coming through. It's going to drop down to about 25 tonight, so we're going to plant them all next week. But peaches, apples, pears, oranges, grapefruit. we got a little bit of everything there. And i got 30 trees to plant, and I'm tired of planting them by hand. So I went out and got this auger. We'll see how that works next week. So I had a lot of people suggest that I mount a bat box to help with all the insects that are going to be around the pond. I've never owned a bat box before, but there it is. I guess they just go right in that entrance right there and sleep in it. We'll check back on it in a week or two and see if they find it. All right, let's get an update out here in the field. I just used the tractor. Going to plant corn from here all the way to the other side. A couple different types of corn. And since the soybeans did so good last year, I'm going to put them right here beside the corn later in the year. And then we'll use some of that field down there for brown top millet and sunflowers for the birds. And you can see those areas that we cut strips through that sorghum. We'll put more crops in those later in the year. And we don't get over here on the back side of the dam too often, but you can see how good that grass did after hydro seeding. So I'd highly recommend it. It was definitely the way to go when we seeded our dam. And it's time to feed Mr. Moby. So it's been kind of a lull in the pond projects here lately because we've been waiting on the spring and the warmer weather. But my plan is to post a lot more frequently once all these projects get going and that should be happening real soon. But that is going to wrap up this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because the best of the pond build series is yet to come. Hope you all enjoyed this video and we will see you all next time.